everybody, and welcome back to the Wapeba Club. My name is Phoenix, and once again, I am joined with one of my regulars on this shit, my good old friend, uh, with Minho. Hello. Yeah, we're behind a, a Target dumpster. I found all this cotton candy, and I'm really loving it. Oh my god. Yeah, what's your 14 <laughs> cups of cotton candy? <laughs> Actually, it's 24, I've counted. You got 24? Wait, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I 11, didn't actually 12, 15, like 14, see how many you 15, had. 15, 16, 17, 18. I have 18 tubs, and I've eaten two so yeah, far. Yeah, and then how many did you eat? You two, oh my god, you ate 20. Yeah, so I, I had 20. That should last me two weeks. Two weeks? I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> one a day. <laughs> it's yeah. not a daily quest, alright? You don't need to eat one a day. What did you say? Is that a what quest? A daily quest. What does that mean? You know, you just like log in, you get your daily bonus for a game or something. Oh. Oh, I'm Maple You're just Story? eating a tub of cotton candy. Yeah, like, it's part of my, like, Duolingo thing. I gotta do my Spanish and eat a tub of cotton candy. Oh my god. <laughs> but maybe I need to eat something sweet because we're about to read a fan fiction about a very bitter man. A drunk man, mind you. Yes. Maybe it needs to balance out. <laughs> You're talking about... Uh, Bill Cosby, of course. Yeah. Well, I was actually talking about Shane, but uh, Bill Cosby is the, the the person that we named for this. Uh. Alright. I don't remember shit from this. I don't want to make fun of him a lot. And then we got him a dandelion, and he said, I don't want that. What, what the fuck am I going to do with it? Yeah. That's all I remember. You know what? Maybe maybe that's it. That's maybe that's all I should remember. And then we got a we got a crush on Shane, which I don't know why anyone any sane person would do that, but I guess Bill Cosby is not a sane person, so womp womp. <laughs> but uh He'll get his hands on anyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Including Shane. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> what what a statement to say about Bill Cosby. Alright, so, I have a very beautiful, shiny coin that I found behind the dumpster. Can't wait to flip it. Do you want heads or tails? Mmm, heads. Alright, heads you read, tails I read. <laughs> Alright, it's tails! Fuck! <laughs> I always win. Alright, these look like pretty decent, like... Pretty decent short chapters, so we'll probably just do one and one, you know? Gotcha. Alright, happy birthday, I guess. You know Thanks. what? Happy birthday. You know what? Yeah. You're welcome, man. <laughs> yeah, it's my birthday this year. How'd you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit, that's crazy. My birthday's this year, too. No, you're not. No, it's not. No, you're all fine. No, that's crazy, man. What a coincidence. <laughs> when is your birthday? I don't think I've ever asked you. Is this year? Yeah, <laughs> I'll ask you off camera. <laughs> All right, let's see. Shane's birthday was coming up, and you wanted to get him something that he would like. Asking him, asking about him was a little more intimidating than you originally thought, though. You kept thinking about all the possibilities. What if they thought you were weird? Valid. <laughs> Liking Shane? You're fucking weird. <laughs> Some kind of stalker? What if Emily likes Shane? Blech. Anyway. <laughs> what if they decide to lie to you? I'm overthinking again. I can do this. I just have to ask them. One afternoon, I decided to stop by the saloon when it was still fairly empty. I rushed in with a serious face and wide eyes. Good afternoon, you said a little louder than usual. Hey, Bill, Emily said, giving you a smile. What are you doing here so early? I have a question. You were coming off a little strange, but didn't want to back down. Um, okay, what is it? Emily and Gus looked at each other, then back to you. Can you please tell me what Shane likes besides beer? <laughs> Damn it, I was about to be like, according to his gift chart, you can just give him beer and he'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> womp womp. You continued, trying to be more confident. <laughs> is there anything else? Gus chuckled as he continued to dry off a glass. Gus! Emily gave him a slight tap on the arm. Well, I'm friends with Shane, so I can tell you. 
I know he likes spicy things and pizza, but that's honestly all about I see him eat, and maybe eggs? Sounds like that boy could fix up his diet. Gus shook his head. Maybe, but I think everyone should learn to be a to be accepting of others, Emily sa said, smiling at you again. Yeah, maybe he'll grow to like and other things later. He, he probably just doesn't have much time to cook since he's always working, he said defensively. All right, all right. Gus chuckled again. No need to get mad. I'm not complaining. The kid comes here about every day, so how's my business? I wasn't getting mad. I was just saying. You blushed as Emily laughed. Haha. <laughs> Even though it was his birthday, Shane still ended up working that day. No one seemed to say anything to him or give him any presents. He went over to the saloon that evening. Shane was already in his usual corner, drinking beer. Hey Gus, can I have a pizza? You asked. Sure thing. Could you make it extra special? What's the occasion? He asked as, he put your, as you put your money on the counter. Oh wait. He put your money in the register. That's that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Shane's birthday, and I wanted to get him something he liked. He said, "Uh, uh, fun." Did I say fondling? I guess, yeah, fondling with your fingers. What would fiddling. that even look like? Oh, fondling. <laughs> fiddle, fiddling. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, at the double read. I was like double checking. I'm like, what? What kind of stuff are you reading? Oh my god, this is my. <laughs> I was I was playing Luigi's Mansion, right? And uh, one of the ghosts that I captured when like the boss ghost at the end was called like Slim Bankshot. Shady? No. Oh, Bankshot. <laughs> when well, he was yeah, like, yeah. he's a guy that plays pool. Uh, when I was reading the names out loud, I accidentally said Slim Backshot. <laughs> Slim Backshot. <laughs> yeah. I thought that... <laughs> to be fair, the text was small on screen. I thought that's what it said. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, that's my only defense, but it was fucking funny, though. Ah, oh, I gotcha, he winked. It's not like that, he yelled, but Gus was already walking away. When he finally handed you the pizza, you realized it had red pepper flakes sprinkled all over the cheese. You thanked Gus, and he gave you a thumbs up. You began to walk over to Shane, but before you can reach him, someone else caught his attention. Emily had come out from behind the counter and handed Shane some pepper poppers. She even gave him a hug, and he smiled. My gift isn't as good as hers. I barely even know him. Maybe I'll just get... Maybe be getting in the way. I put this pe special pizza back on the bar and promptly left the saloon. Wow, what a dumbass. <laughs> okay. Stop being self-conscious, Bill Cosby. Yeah, just be yourself, bro. Yeah, actually, maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, just be yourself, Bill Cosby. <laughs> you got home quickly and tried to sleep. It was a complete failure. A mixture of jealousy and sadness was coursing through every part of you. You decided to go for a walk through the forest. Maybe it would help clear your head. Emily is a friendly, cheerful girl. She seems so quirky and nice and so pretty. Red lipstick looks great on her. Are we falling for Emily? <laughs> The way that they're describing her, I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, she's she's hot. <laughs> you know, why not? Yeah. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> this is an Emily X reader now. <laughs> I could never pull that off. There's no way I can compete with her. I'm just a new farmer. You walked over to the lake of the forest. Maybe you could do a little night fishing or just look at the stars. As you got closer, you noticed a faint light at the end of the dock. I think you were sitting at the edge. You quietly walked closer and realized it was Shane. It was a sad image to see him drinking alone in the dark on his birthday. You decided to sit next to him. Up late, huh? I just want to say, happy birthday, Shane. Gus gave me a pepper pizza you ordered for me. Thanks. It was no problem at all. I hope you liked it. Here, have a cold one, he said as he handed you a beer. Oh, thank you. You nodded. You both watched the the black lake and a few minutes of silence passed. Ugh, life. You ever feel like, no matter what you do, you're gonna fail? You looked at him with sad eyes. He continued. Like, you're stuck in some miserable abyss and you're so deep you can't even see the light of the day. I just feel like, no matter how hard I try, 
I'm not strong enough to climb out of that hole. Yeah, I know that feeling. You look down at the beer. If you're not strong enough, I like to help you climb out. And you chugged it. Heh, <laughs> fast drinker, huh? Woman. <laughs> After your heart. <laughs> Why did he. Why did this author have woe in parentheses? I think we're supposed to be gender neutral. Oh. Yeah, I guess okay. that was just a choice. A choice was made. <laughs> Middle transition. Yeah. <laughs> he responded, disregarding what you said. He began to blush, but he didn't seem to notice. Just don't make it a habit. You got a future ahead of you still. You do too. <laughs> right. Well, my liver's begging me to stop. Better call her night. See you around, Bill. Oh, you have a good night. And he was gone. I know better- I know better than you think, Shane. You shouldn't have to go through it. Your tears felt- felt like light rain on a quiet darkness of the- of the- of the lake that night. The moonlight- gentle rays comforted you. Hopefully, they were comforting him, too. Yeah. You know what's funny? <laughs> what? This is not making me feel any better about Shane. <laughs> I mean, like, yep, deserves. for him is just too much. Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, I mean, you, I mean, you played Stardew Valley with us and whatnot. You've seen Shane. What's your opinion? Uh, he's moody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Understatement, yes, I know. Yeah. Under yeah, that's a nicer bad word, you know? Bad adjective, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's all. Alright, the flower dance. Are we really gonna ask this man to dance with us? He's gonna burp in her face. <laughs> yeah, it's romantic, right? No! <laughs> I'm sure uh, Gingy does that to you. I do it to Gingy, he fucking <laughs> doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> what does he do to you? No, he's not disgusting like that. He doesn't burp in Oh, you call yourself disgusting like that. Well, like, I, I think it's a trade-off where I, like, burp around him and, like, blow it at him. He's like, oh, what the fuck? He, like, farts around me and then, and, and whatnot. So, it's a trade-off. We're both gross. <laughs> Damn, you just called him out. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you honestly think he's gonna watch a Wattpad book club reading and be like, that bitch just tall called me out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, the flower dance. <laughs> Good transition. Yeah. Uh, ever since what happened on Shane's birthday, you looked at him differently. You talked to him every day that you could, but he was rude as before. Wow, that's surprising. Uh, you had an odd attraction from the start. Attraction from the start, but now you realize the truth behind his harshness. There's invisible icicles you try to hide. They are sharp and cold, digging into your insides. Most people cannot see them. You won't let them. But I can see. I see the way they won't let you sleep. I see the effort it takes to move when the frozen nails are keeping you- Damn! What the <laughs> just fuck, opening bitch? Up. <laughs> it's just like, what are you, a psychiatrist? <laughs> they're just like, this little monologue's like, I am in crippling depression. Oh shit, that reminds me of a fanfiction I read with Gummy. Like, this author was going, like, ham on the depression, like, like, paragraph. It was, like, paragraphs of describing our reader's depression. And I'm like, damn, bitch, can you calm the fuck down? <laughs> it's not that serious. Uh, but I can see, I can see the way they won't let you sleep. I see the effort it takes to move when the frozen nails are keeping you down. I see the bitterness of the cold reaching into your heart. And that explains why sometimes it's hard to feel any warmth. I see the way they numb your lips and the way your eyes are frigid. No matter how many times you try to melt them, they just return. I know, I really wish I could help, but I can't lose someone else to this. Okay, that's... Yeah, how was your day too? Thanks, yeah. I'm good. Oh my god, fucking trauma dumping on me right now. <laughs> Spring was coming to an end, and the flower dance was approaching. Mayor Lewis had sent a letter in the mail telling you that you might even want to participate in the dance. Maybe I can ask Shane, though I don't know that he would like to dance with me. Or that he would like to dance at all for that matter. Maybe I'll just talk to him only. 
Once you had harvested everything and watered the remaining crops, you realized that you were actually nervous. It was a dance, and you weren't particularly great at dancing. You had attended a few dances before, but they always ended up being kind of boring or stressful. Uh, you didn't really like loud noise and were kind of sensitive to it, but maybe this would be different since it was just the people in Pelican Town. Granny Evelyn had been put in charge of decorations and it looked wonderful. There were colorful arrangements of flowers to complement the brightness of the grass. Emily saw you as you were coming in and greeted you. Hey, Bill Cosby. Ooh, I'm stuffed. You're gonna love the red jelly. Make sure to have some. Thanks, I will. And you suddenly gave her a hug, feeling bad for being jealous and internally mad at her. Emily didn't even question it and simply hugged you back. You talked to the rest of the people around and spotted Shane sitting by one of the tables. All kinds of food rested on the pink mantle, roasted chicken, and the red jelly Emily mentioned. Salad, parsnip stew, and drinks. You pulled a wooden chair next to him and slowly sat on it. Hey, farmer. Oh, uh, hey, Shane. You were surprised he had actually greeted you. I'm just here for the food, really. You into these dances? He took a gulp of his drink. This guy's always drinking, like, 24-7. Yeah, I mean, that's all he does. He's a drunk. <laughs> what, what else do you expect? <laughs> respect it. I respect it. Yeah, Alright. You do you. Alcoholic. You do you. <laughs> well, not really. I don't know how to dance that well. Then why did you come? He asked. I thought it'd be nice to spend time with people in town, I guess. You noticed the Bastion looking at you several feet away. He smiled and waved, but he quickly looked away. Mm. Smile and wave, boys. Does he like us too? Oh my god. Oh boy. He turned back to Shane, who continued drinking his beer. You decided to ask him if he knew anything about animals. You knew he would, he would since he lived with Marnie and she had mentioned he helped with the chickens. He gave you advice on how to raise them for the future coop you were planning to get. Make sure they get enough space and grass, alright? He had told you uh, with a serious expression. It was sort of cute seeing him talk about it. He seemed to really care about the hens. Music began to play and luckily it wasn't too loud. You are watching dancing in couples on what, what? You are watching dancing in couples on the grass. Yeah, that's what right. You, it's not spelled. It's not. I don't think. It, I think it, you were watching dancing couples on the grass. Oh yeah, maybe you were watching dancing couples on the grass. Shane had suddenly stood up and held his hand out to you. <laughs> Sorry, it's a gag reflex. <laughs> <laughs> What, whenever, whenever you see the word Shane? Yeah, <laughs> Come on, I can't let you embarrass yourself by stepping on someone else's feet. I'll try to do the minimum damage. You shyly chuckled as you took his hand. You were very nervous and neither of you were in sync. You ended up actually stepping on him several times. You furiously apologized every time and he calmly kept telling you to relax. As you took a step forward, your foot hit a small stone on the ground, making you trip forward. God damn Shane, it. <laughs> and landing on top of him. Smooth, smooth. Smooth like butter. Like cantalite undercover, man. Oh my god. I just keep <laughs> imagining Bill Cosby and Shane now. It's just because it's Bill Cosby. I keep it's a dynamic it's duo Cosby right there. At the end. Some people were looking over at the two of you, not knowing whether to laugh or be concerned. So it ignores you instead. <laughs> oh. You ever, you ever like fall or trip on like stairs or like a freaking a step in public? Yeah, I've, then, I've tripped over my own feet. Yeah, and then um, it's even worse when they just ignore you. <laughs> it's yeah. Just like, all right, just let them suffer in silence. Yeah. Carry on. I'm such a mess. Shane looked at you in silence for a few seconds and began laughing. His laughter drowned out all the other noise going on, and it was the only music you could hear. This was the first time you heard Shane laugh. You smiled and put your hand out to help him get up. How can you be this bad? He teased as he took your hand. I don't know. I guess not knowing how to dance, that 
that well was a bit of an understatement. No kidding. I'm gonna take off. Thanks for the terrible dance, though. See you around, he grinned. <laughs> it was my pleasure. Bye. You smiled widely. That was the most beautiful thing you saw that spring. Right? Shane was the most beautiful thing you saw, right? No! The <laughs> beautiful thing right? I saw that spring was Dr. Harvey, man, if you catch my drift. <laughs> uh, no. I oh. think I repressed that from my memory, no. I don't- I don't recall a Harvey. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not even the book that we've been reading for like, uh, like six episodes. <laughs> book? What book? Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe that was someone else. <laughs> yeah, must have. Alright, another summer day. And there's there's Sebastian drawn on here, so I feel like uh, Sebastian's gonna like us too. Which honestly, between the two, I'd rather go out with Sebastian. Just saying. <laughs> Sebastian? Yeah, that uh, Is emo like... kid. Oh yeah, he's like moody too, but he has a motorcycle. That's yeah, much cooler. Right. Yeah, at least he's like emo and edgy, and at least he has a reason. He's like, well, he's still kind of like an edgy teenager, you know? At least he's like not a 30 year old man drunk and working at a grocery store. Wait, he drinks too? I said at least I thought he's he not. Like, <laughs> I thought he like just smokes and drives his motorcycle. I think he, yeah, he does smoke and has motorcycle. Uh, like, I don't know if he drinks. personality. Yeah. Smoking motorcycle and frogs. He likes frogs. He likes frogs, though. Yeah, he likes to go out on, on like rainy days and look at the frogs that come out. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, it's real lore. Yeah, I like to do that too. Very common interest. Yeah, that's like Cameron. He like goes out whenever it like just rained and he tries to see if he can find any frogs or like hear them croaking. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually did that. No, yeah, yeah, he's done that a lot. When he lived with the uh, with Heisen and whatnot, he would he would go out and see if he could pick up frogs. Oh, what an idiot! Yeah, what a dunce. <laughs> anyway, summer day, warm and sunny weather had come and come with its thunderstorms. It was look summer. at that thumbnail. You like? I know you like that Shane picture. I do. Yeah. Ah, oh, shit. I guess. <laughs> the luau had just passed. We managed to impress the governor with the best soup ever, using only the finest of your produce. Oh, we didn't even get the luau thing? Damn. What if I wanted to put Lewis's shorts in there? <laughs> I didn't get you the can't. option. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. More than anything, you were just happy to spend more time with Shane and listen to him talk about how they don't have hot pepper uh, chutney in, like this in the big city. His eyes seemed to soften when you laughed, but you weren't really sure of anything. It was a bright day and you were gathering some red mushrooms, sweet peas, and spice berries. You found yourself by Sebastian's house and decided to stop by. You actually had never been in his room, but you... But you guys were starting to become friends. Why not? You thought. It's not a big deal, right? You didn't get nervous, but knocked on the door anyway. Come in. You heard Sebastian's voice inside. Hey, you said, walking towards his desk. Oh, hey, give me a second. He responded, still looking at the screen of his computer. Should I leave? I think I'll just wait for him. That sh it should be okay. It was quiet, besides the loud tapping on his keyboard. Wait, is this his heart scene? Ah, oh, shit, I think it is. No. Oh, like when, yeah, I forgot what heart event it was. It was like, what, like two or four two. or something? I think it's number two. Okay, sorry about that. I just need to finish up what I was working on, he finally said. Curious, he walked over next to him and looked at the screen. No worries, I don't mind waiting. So, what are you working on, if you don't mind me asking? I do freelance work as a programmer. A sudden bleep rang. It was an message from Sam. I guess he wants to hang out. I don't really feel like hanging out today. Then someone walked into the room. Oh, hi, Bill! It was Robin. She walked closer to where you and Sebastian were. 
Seppi, I know you don't like it when I come in here, but I ran into uh, Abigail at the store and she said she was looking for you. Did you tell her I'm working? Sebastian's mouth seemed to curl down and his eyes looked darker than normal. I did, but she said she'd probably stop by anyway, Robin said quietly. After a long, expiration sigh, <sighs> Sebastian said, No one takes my job seriously. No one even bothers M Maru when she's working at the clinic. Does everyone think I'm just surfing the web all day? Sorry, I tried, Robin replied and simply walked away shrugging. So, what are your career goals? There's not much for programming to do here, I'm guessing. He tried to lessen Sebastian's annoyance. It seemed sad, but no one took his passion seriously. Well, I'm trying to save up to move out of here. Probably to the city or something. He paused. You know, but if I'd gone to college, I'd probably be making six figures by now. But I didn't want to be part of the corporate rat race, you know? He paused again. This time, a little longer. I do. I was part of that. It wasn't really pleasant. That's why I'm here, actually, you said. Oh. I don't really know. Oh, I didn't really know. He looked He looked at your eyes, then looking down. He finally said, Well, and I guess I always just feel more comfortable hidden behind the computer than dealing with people face to face. He almost seemed to frown. It's okay. People in the universe do. You gave him a small smile and put your hand on his shoulder. Ugh, PDA, SMH. <laughs> he looked at your hand and seemed to get flustered. Well, I should get back to work. I need to keep. I need to get this model finished by tomorrow. You said with his eyes back on the screen. Oh, okay. Good luck with your work. You waved goodbye to him as you walked away. As you were walking home, you noticed Shane on his way to the saloon. You decided to just go and say hi to him. Hey Shane, how was work? You said cheerfully. As awful as always, he replied, then looking over at you. How was your day? It was pretty good. I visited Sebastian and foraged for mushrooms, berries, and such. Who's Sebastian? Is he the emo goth kid that goes to the saloon with the other kids? Yep, that's oh, accurate. Yeah. yeah, that's basically it. He asked, still walking. Yeah, that one. You chuckled at Shane's description of Sebastian. So, are you guys... He stopped. Never mind. What? Nothing. Don't worry about it, really. And with that, you both went into the saloon and shared a beer before you headed home for tonight. Yeah. Can, this, can this turn from a Sebastian X reader? Uh, sorry, a Shane X reader to a Sebastian X reader? I think I would like that a lot more. No, it's gonna just a get the reader out and turn into Shane X Sebastian. Oh. Yeah, we did. They're like, get out of here, man. We don't need you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dance uh, of the dance. moonlight jellies. I like this event. It doesn't do anything though. Yeah, I don't know. It's so pretty watching all the jellyfish go by, and then you get to see the little green one. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. They should, like, I don't know if, like, the, uh, new update came out or whatever, but they should add, like, add something to this event. Yeah. I gotta see when they're doing that thing again, because maybe we can pick up Stardew Valley again. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I heard for, like, that, um, streams. I heard that it, like, just incorporates into pre-existing worlds, so, like, you don't have to make a new world. Yeah, see, we're, we're better. Let's see, we can do that. True. We're just built right. different. Exactly. Dance of the Moonlight Jellies. Summer went by in a flash. Sam's birthday had passed, so Sebastian, Abigail, and you celebrated the day with him. He got some pizza for everyone, and Sam thanked you, claiming it was his absolute favorite. Then he looked over at Sebastian and said, I can see why you like her so much. You blushed. Sebastian. You blushed and Sebastian saw him an ugly look and Abigail made a face you hadn't seen before. Wait, is that like, uh, Sebastian and Abigail or something? I mean, they're all shipped together. Okay. Yeah. 
Why must new people always be awkwardly teased? Sebastian and I are just friends, even I know that. Luckily, the day continued peacefully after that. Farming-wise, you experimented with planting different crops. It was sort of intimidating, but you were a farmer now. You had to learn. Melon and red cabbage seeds were expensive to buy, but they sold for even more. You learned it was worth the money. You also learned about the majesty that is corn. I can harvest this over and over again. It's amazing. Your knowledge had begun to expand, and you were also saving up money and collecting wood and stone to have Robin build you a chicken coop. You even had a name for your first chicken, nutmeg. If it's brown or miso, or if it's brown or miso, if it's white. Nutmeg if it's oh, brown. Oh, nutmeg if it's brown. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken color, Minho. <laughs> the comma there. Alright, nutmeg if it's brown and miso if it's white. It was still morning when you finished watering your crops and checked them all. Mail. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Bill Cosby, Tonight at around 10 o'clock p.m., a rare and beautiful event will take place. The Moonlight Jellies will be passing by Pelican Town on their long journey south for the winter. We're all gathering at the beach to watch. You don't want to miss this. See you tonight, Demetrius. Well, this sounds like fun. I bet Shane will be there too. He smiled. It was the last day of summer, so you harvested everything you could. It was time to say goodbye to the season. You spent most of your day foraging and enjoying the last bit of warm weather. Nighttime came quickly and you headed over to the beach. You almost immediately ran into Linus. You asked him why he was all the way in the back. I'll just sneak up when the jellies arrive, he paused. I don't want to bother anyone. He tried to convince him that he wouldn't be a bother, which made him smile a little bit, but refused to move. You then looked for Demetrius. Since he had sent the invitation, you wanted to thank him. Maru, Robin, and he were all standing around together. You were not surprised that Sebastian was not with the family. Maru commented on the weather. Uh, Robin complained about how late it was, and when he tried thanking Demetrius, he just went on about what a remarkable species the Moonlight Jelly are, and how lucky we are that they stop here. He chuckled that Sebastian was related to them. As he continued walking, everybody seemed to be either thinking about the end of summer or the jellyfish. Wait a minute, wait, hold on. <laughs> For what, what I know about jellyfish, they don't move and whatnot. They like they just go with like the tides and whatnot. So it's a miracle that the tides allow them to like come by Pelican Town every every year because they can't move. True. Maybe it's like a seasonal thing. You know what like El Nino is? No, I don't know what that is. It's like a like a seasonal tide mm. that happens. It's like something about like warm water rising or whatever like once a year and like just like a tide comes into the shore so i mean maybe that's it could be that or something i don't know yeah i just know jellyfish don't here. have a bone structure so they don't move yeah they don't they just go with the flow yeah. they're broke yeah basically finally you found shane standing on the docks hey there you are Hi Shane, this is so exciting. He stood next to him. The jellies were here a year ago, and they'll be back again a year from now. Nature is amazing. He continued to look into the water. Uh, water. Uh, isn't it? He smiled. Jas peeked over from behind Jane and said, I hope there are babies this year. Who's Jess? Uh, his niece. Shane's niece? Yeah, because uh, Marnie, that's Marnie's kid. Or is that Marnie's niece? I can't fucking remember. Wait, is that the one that's like always jump roping? Yeah, she's like, I don't, I don't talk to strangers. <laughs> yeah, cause, oh wait, she calls her Aunt Marnie. So that, yeah, that is her niece. And I guess that's her, his cousin, technically, I think. Oh, uh, okay. Family trees are weird. <laughs> uh, Jess? peeked over from behind Shane and said, I hope there are babies this year. Me too. They're the cutest. Joss gave you a big grin. Mary Lewis walked over to you. Good evening, Bill Cosby. 
The moonlight jellies are close. I already saw one glowing in the distance. Once we launch the camel boat, they'll come up to the docks and say hello. Let's do it now, Jazz yelled. What do you think? Should I launch the boat now? Mary Lewis smirked at Jazz. Yes, yes, continued Jazz with the excitement of a child. Well, I think Jazz has already answered for us all, he chuckled. Mary Lewis detached the rope that kept the camel boat attached to the docks. It was gently pulled away by the waves. Jess had run off to find Marty, and Mary Lewis had followed. Shane and you were sitting on the docks waiting for the show. So, why are you hanging around the town drunk instead of your emo golf friends? Oh. <laughs> so true, I'd rather be doing that. <laughs> Wait, did Mary Lewis say that, or did Jess say that? I think that was Shane. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought Jazz said that, and I was like, oh my god, children are just brutally honest. Dude, honestly, on a side note, children are, man. They get under your skin sometimes. Why, why your nose so big? Why your neck so long? <laughs> They're just <laughs> roasting you in subtle ways. Yeah, basically. Because I'd rather spend time with you, even if you were the town drunk. You gave a small laugh. I don't really get why, but okay, he didn't laugh. It had become increasingly dark, and you began to see little bulbs of light moving towards you. As I moved closer, you could see the shape of the jellies. It's wonderful to think that these little creatures simply happen to have bioluminescent organs that emit light. That, by nature, they could be this beautiful, you thought out loud. I guess some things are just naturally beautiful like that. They don't have to try. Like I said, nature is amazing. Shane looked at you. Exactly. That must be nice. You paused. It almost looks like we're looking at the night sky and the jellies are big, bright stars floating around. You both stayed quiet for a few minutes, enjoying the magical view of this last summer night. It was late, and the night began to grow chilly as fall neared. You, being sensitive to the weather, began to shiver as quietly as you could. How am I already getting cold? And I didn't even bring a sweater. I don't want my shivering to annoy him. I'm right next to you. I can still hear you shiver, you know. He put his arm around you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> A gag reflex? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Shane, he looked over at you, blushing. Yeah? He looked at your... He looked at you after taking a drink of his beer. Like those jellyfish, let's be back here next year, too, and watch them together. He didn't say anything. You wished he had. Oh, this comment from, like... Uh, KCMC1. Nah, I'm was, seeing that. That's accurate. <laughs> you know, Pam is the town drunk. You're just an alcoholic, but it's fine. I'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> you have not reached the title of town drunk yet. Yeah. You're just some basic alcoholic idiot. Yeah, you're just a basic alcoholic. Get over yourself. <laughs> basic ass alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, stop being so basic. Why don't you be like Pam? <laughs> yeah, why don't you be like Pam who drinks every day at yeah. every given second? It's like those parents She's that, veteran. Yeah. It's like those parents that uh like compare their children constantly and they're like, Why can't you be like your brother? <laughs> why can't you be like Pam? Yeah. She drinks every second. Yeah, why can't you be like her instead of a disappointment? Just a normal nobody. <laughs> As it, didn't Pam like go get a drink and then she couldn't pay a tab or something? No, her thing is like uh, I can't remember, I think it's a Gus part of it. Cause like, he's like, man, I don't want to tell her no, but like, she has like a large tab she hasn't paid yet, and I don't want to get yeah, her upset. Well, wasn't that like, off of drinking or something? Yeah, cause that's her beer tab, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not oh, like she's gonna God. go anywhere. She lives right next to the saloon, but you still gotta pay your goddamn bartender, man. One night she's just gonna like, drink all she can, just yeah. like 15 drinks, and then just move to the city. Yeah. <laughs> just don't pay it. I don't think Run. she can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> Run away drunk. Yeah. Family dinner. Oh, Jesus Christ. 
I'm scared. Oh, wait. Do we have the... Uh... I think this will be the last chapter before we have to go live. <laughs> Alright. Alright, a family dinner. Alright. A week of fall has gone by, and you are still in awe of all the brilliant- of the, uh, the vibrant colors of the season. The trees varied from chestnut to reddish violet to a deep orange. Bright leaves were falling in a swaying motion, covering the wilting grass in colors. You began to find blackberries and mushrooms in the abundance. All your crops had wilted, except for one. You discovered that corn, corn would also grow during fall. This is like the fucking- this is like our Ohio farm. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking cows and corn. That's all you need. <laughs> uh, thank- thank Yoba. How incredibly- how incredible can corn be? That's what I'm saying, man. Corn's the god thing. You went over to Pierre's to buy some more seeds. You already had some eggplant and, and bok choy growing, but you definitely need a pumpkin. It can't be fall without pumpkins. You saw some other seeds that looked fun to grow, but decided to wait for now. Well, at Pierre's, you ran to Marnie. Good morning, Marnie. How are you today? You said with said to her cheerfully. Hello, sweetie. I'm just doing great, and yourself? I'm good, just gonna go plant some pumpkin seeds. Of course, it's just, it's this fall. I didn't mean to ask you, would you like to come over for some dinner? She said and gave a warm smile. Is that what she sounds like? I don't know. I, f I feel like she's country. She's got a farm animals. That was not good. Of course, it is the fall. That's of like. Of course, it's the fall. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. Don't worry about it. It sounds like you were trying to say, hey, I'm walking over here. Yeah, she I gave her a Boston accent. That's exactly it. It's fine. It's, it's a. I, I was like, how did I do Sandy's accent? <laughs> Yeah, just give her a uh, country Boston accent. Yeah, I'm trying my best, and it's not enough. <laughs> oh, that's that's very kind of you. I'd love to. Should I bring anything? Well, if you want to get my nephew's good side, you should bring over some hot peppers. Oh, uh, you looked away and chuckled. Sure, I can do that. I still have some lot from the summer. Wonderful. Jazz will be excited to see you, but I'm sure Shane will be too. She raised her eyebrow. I won't tell him that, it, so it'll be a little surprise for him. He's home all day on Sundays anyway. I'll see you at 6 p.m. then. Then she walked away. You just stood there for a minute. Oh, Yoba, what is happening? I've been to Marnie's ranch, sure, but only to inquire about animals. Am I really going to have dinner with Shane's family? Is this actually happening? Oh my god. Yeah, we're moving too fast, man. Yeah, Bill Cosby gotta chill. <laughs> You head home. Joe yeah, Joe, dog. Go Take go a plant show pumpkins. Pill, Bill. Go plant pumpkins. Do something. <laughs> <laughs> you headed home at a quicker pace than normal. Immediately, you got to work on tilting the soil, putting some fer fertilizer, planting the seeds, and watering them. The manual labor helped keep your head clear. That that is until you were done. It was barely 1 p.m., so you decided to go for a walk to try to keep your nerves in check. What if I completely mess this up? What if I do something stupid? What if she doesn't even want us want me there? Could this be a terrible surprise for him? You were walking by the river when you heard someone. Bill. It was some Ashton. Oh hey, I'm sorry I didn't see you. I wasn't paying attention. He gave a small laugh. You doing okay? You took the cigarette off his lips. Yeah, I'm good. Don't worry, I'm just nervous about something. Hey, sit down with me. Just watch the water flow. It's peaceful, isn't it? Yeah, it really is, you said, after sitting next to him. The smell of tobacco lingered in the air. Sam usually comes with me on Sundays, but I like being here alone sometimes. Oh, I'm sorry. Should I leave? You begin to get up. No, it's fine. Just be quiet. He grabbed your hand and pulled you back down and quickly pulled his hand away. We both sat in silence, watching the river flow its course. You felt much more at ease. Time passed rather quickly. Thank you, Sebastian. I really appreciate you letting me keep you company. You broke the silence. It's no problem at all. I enjoyed it. You flicked a cigarette butt into the river. Man fucking littering. The fish can't eat that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what the fuck? I had to go now, but I'll see you around, okay? You said getting up. Right. He got it too. 
See you around. He walked away. You headed home to freshen up a bit and grab the hot peppers. On your way to Marnie's ranch, the anxiety began to build up again. You were feeling nauseous, but you had to show up. You can't just not show up. I mean, your farm's like directly above hers. It's like hard to avoid her. <laughs> <laughs> just speed out. Yeah. You lightly knocked on the door. Marnie opened it, if only a few seconds. She brightly told you to wait as she can go call Shane out of his room. You walked over to the kitchen where Jazz was. You waved over and she giggled. You set the hot peppers on the table. Marnie walked into Shane's room since he didn't want to open the door. Oh dear, you heard her say with a tone of concern. Yeah, that was basically what I said. <laughs> you, you headed over <laughs> to Shane's room, worried that something might have happened to him. Bill, can you do something? He's out cold. You, she told you. Shane had collapsed in the middle of the room, surrounded by empty cans of beer. It was your first time in Shane's room, but you didn't really see him beyond collapse on the floor. You didn't even notice any of the details. You looked at Marnie and walked to the kitchen to grab a bowl of cold water. You stood in front of Shane and poured it on his face. Got him. Yeah. I love when you do it in the game, it's just a watering can that you just pour on. <laughs> What? You woke up, seemingly surprised and very confused. He looked at you with dark eyes. Shane, what is the matter with you? I'm, what the fuck accent did I do? <laughs> I did <laughs> British! <laughs> fuck, I can't remember. <laughs> I just switched from Boston to country to British. What is wrong with me? <laughs> You're just reading whatever you want now at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Shane, what is the matter with you? All you all you do is mope around the room and drink beer. Marnie was actually upset. You have never seen her upset. Shane looked away and stayed quiet for a few seconds. You won't understand, he muttered, turning around. I'm worried. M Marnie's voice softened a little. What's your plan? Don't you ever think about the future? He noticed that Jazz walked into the room. Plan? Shane said with a scoff. Hopefully I won't be around long enough to need a plan. Jazz. Bro, Sam. I mean, what? Never mind. Jazz's big eyes were already tearing up, and upon the ending of that sentence, she began to sob. Shane turned around, but Jazz was already running out the room, followed by Marnie. Jazz, I'm sorry, Shane said, looking down at his feet. He saw tears welling up in his eyes. He kneeled down and pulled on his hair. Oh my god, this is crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Just, I was crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's got dark. His eyes were tightly shut. It was as if he feared that th that the anger and hatred would leak out of him any second. You hadn't said a word this whole time. You just stood there. Finally, you began to take a few steps towards him. You were crying. Stay away from me! You s he screamed. You stood in place, shocked. You hadn't heard that in a long time. I'm sorry. You took a step back and ran off all altogether. You thought of your mother that night, looked up at the moon. You told her, I miss you, Mom. Please help me save him in the way that I couldn't save you. Was our mom an alcoholic? <laughs> God <laughs> damn. Man, we have issues. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, it's a, it's a hunch, but I think we have issues. I mean, our main issue is that we like shame. But that's besides the point. <laughs> but, uh, what, I don't know, what do, you, what do you think? Um, yes. Excellent. <laughs> it just got, uh, quicker all of a sudden. Just start pouring the depression down her throat again. Yeah. Uh, also, that is one of his heart events. Oh yeah, I noticed that they were kind of just using uh, what his events were. Yes, yeah, the source material, yeah. I mean, why change it, you know? If it ain't broken, don't fix it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can see why this was in the dumpster back here now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not because the book is bad, it's just I don't like Shane. Hey, you chose it. No, I didn't! The book, the fucking wheel did! Hey, put it on the wheel, though. Probably you. 
That was not me. There's that no was, way. That was 100% you. Just like the there's... fucking Kung Fu Panda thing. Everything's your fault. No, oh, Mike. <laughs> well, I guess speaking of the wheel, we probably should spin that, huh? Man, I can't read. I can't wait to just read some regular fanfic like. Kung like Fu Panda. Like Brian or Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, normal fanfiction. Yeah, yeah. It's already 710, though. Yeah, yeah. All right, we have a lot of stuff on here. Let's see what we get. Did I share the screen? <laughs> mm, no. Oh, fuck, hold on. Like, what? uh, like what's a normal fanfic? I don't know. Uh, Minho's uh, Choice is a normal uh, fanfic. <laughs> like, like, Cuphead x No, we're not doing that! <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty normal. No! Oh, look, you get your wish. <laughs> that's finally a normal fanfic. What do you mean a normal? Classic. The classic. What do you Obsidian mean? Obsidian X Cobblestone. No! <laughs> what, is there a book for this? Like, yeah. let me check. Okay, yeah. good. It's a short book. So, yeah. Alright, I am, like, impressed and disappointed at the same time that people would think of this. I found it because of the crafting table X furnace that we read a while ago. Shouldn't it be like water X lava or something? You would, you would think. But no, just rock X obsidian. And then they just keep popping out cobblestone babies or something? Oh my, no. What the fuck? Yeah, it's how it works. The water gets Life. out of control and kills the lava. Oh my. Tur turns into obsidian. God. No. No. <laughs> All right. I guess. I mean, that, that's pretty normal fan fiction. <laughs> yeah, pretty normal. Yeah. But I guess that. Uh, I guess next time we, I bring you behind the dumpster for Wattpad reading purposes. I guess we're gonna be reading an Obsidian X cobblestone. God. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget to bring your uh, lava bucket, and I'll bring my water bucket. Oh my god, we can make a cobblestone generator! Exactly. Or we can make one piece of obsidian, which is way better. Yeah, but like, then we can't have any heat and we can't drink any water. Oh, shit. Yeah, see? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's cool back here still. It's the end of winter, but it, it's still winter. At least we can sit on a piece of obsidian. Yeah, but what are we gonna do with one piece of obsidian? Sit on it. The only one of us can sit on it! Yeah, it's me. The fuck you, man. I'd rather have heat and water than one piece of obsidian. Also, every time I say one piece, I'm thinking of, like, the actual anime. Of course you are. Yeah, it's like a reflex. But alright, thank, thank you for joining Minho on this shit. Yeah. Pre appreciate it, dog. Of course. I'm glad that you're one of the one of the two regulars that I have every week. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the other one? Jolene. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, my name is Phoenix. That was Minho, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>